looking at some different patterns here to show us. Well, there, there's one with traditional um, log cabin, one of the ways it's put together. Now there's the window I told you about. Mm-hmm. And the, usually, you know, there's one half is light and one half is dark. And it's the way you put the light in the dark. Mm -hmm. in so this is red, black, yellow, oh, well, white. These, these are a lot of different pieces, but they're all light. And these are these are all dark pieces. And then some but of those are each, floral, right? Well, yeah. Oh, each uh, one, though, has has have from the same material. It's, the one that my grandmother made was an inch square of red flannel. Mm -hmm. I'll um, bet that flannel well, would make a nice warm one, huh? Well, some of these dress, I suppose. But there's and there's a way that you have to do it. One is like that, and then this one fits the, those two together. This one fits those two, and this comes over the third. This one fits that little size. You have to do it just. Uh -huh. yeah. It's got to be done just right. Now there's, that's an old Red one. Red star quilt. And rose cross quilt, this one is. Oh, there's the one that oh, oh. there's, there's a yellow there's one. A, well, what, how do they make those? Are those those it, puffs? No, it's a puff one. Here's a puff one. This was made 100 years ago by a 12-year-old boy while convalescing. Huh. Look at that. Every, and those are socks or something, huh? No, probably, no, those would be stuffed with wool Except 100 years ago. They, but they were, probably all the neighbors and everybody gathered together and gave them bits. You see, they make, uh -huh. the, make the one square, then they make the other square larger, and take a tuck in it on each edge. Uh -huh. So that this one turns up. And this is taken, you, well, a lot of them are made you take a square like that and turn the edge in and run your thread you run your your thread right around and pull it up and it almost, oh like a, so like a almost, sack net almost meet meets, meets in the middle yeah. you see yeah. and that's called a yo-yo and that's an old design too now there's there's one of the ways to put this grandmother's grandmother's some of those patches would be this size you see garden huh? garden is a flower garden yeah. and that's what that called. There's your, there's your bear, bear, paw bear paw again. I think that's my favorite for the name only, and I guess. This is uh, Carolina Lily. Yeah. And oh, that, there's a gorgeous and one. That one's uh, Ocean Waves. And that, just, look just at look at all the, the triangles in that, huh? And this is single squares, just inch squares, most of them are. Uh, now there's that. Um, um, Lone Star. Lone Star. Yeah. There's, there's several versions of it, but uh, in, the, in the different colors. But you can see how they now you can see how the exact precision has got to be maintained on that from one yeah. end to the other. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, right, or you're going to come out wrong on that. It's like laying tile. If your tiles get out of line, you know, mosaic tile or ceiling tile or what have you. Yeah, this one for a youngster. <laughs> what do they call it? Oh, Patchwork. Something like your like your big your big one that you said your mother made you call. Yeah. What did you call it? Uh, oh, oh, big Betsy. Yeah. Big well, Betsy. Well, that's a, now there's there's another version of the of the um, log cabin, not nearly so spectacular, but that's what that's the one that's used down here. Oh yeah, yeah I can see that. So that's a lot. You'd call that a log cabin. Quote? Well, most yeah, people, it's the same. Most people know the log cabin, but this has maintained. The, uh, the centerpiece is the same color all through, uh -huh. so that it gives a woven effect like this uh -huh. from both ways. Hmm. And there's how the old fashioned. And That's a, what is that, a teddy bear or a clown oh, or something? It's a great big female figure, I think. This one yeah, for Pat, yeah. But there you see, that, that's how I made Well, that's sewn with yarn here, huh? Well, no, no it was embroidery cotton that I used. That was, that's where I put all my velvets together, like that. And here's a quilt. We didn't say anything about frames at all, but there are all kinds of frames. That's made out of a doll. Yours is just plain boards with C-clamps on it, isn't it? Yeah, we had, we had the genuine quilting clamps, but they're, they got stripped years ago. Uh -huh. These are... Oh, -ho. Rose Smalling. There's the old Norwegian. Good hearts. 
er, good hearts are, no, oh, glad hearts. Glad heart er, in, in this. Now, e dog, in, in dog, today. Yeah. Anyway, those are Norwegian. Yeah. That's definitely Norwegian. There's a glad heart er, a joy or something. Glad hearts are a joy. The Dutch, and some German, and the Norwegians and the Swedes have a lot of this kind. That Rochemalen yes. on wood painting. That's painting on wood for benefit of the tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> there, look at that. Well, that's a uh, decoupage. Yeah. Ever. Pretty pages. That's what should be done with these beautiful calendars that we have. I've got a, I've got an old um, um, look this tea, um, tea box uh -huh. like that. With a with a sunken lid, and it, somebody should get a home there. It's it's a Make it's, a, a it's almost a museum piece. Yeah. Now, there's some more things in here. I'll show you. I made that rug once. What's that? Ravishing rugs. I made that rug, and I uh, I dyed all the yarns from old sweaters and mittens and gloves and hats. And what stuff. do you use? Rit dye? What mm -hmm. kind of dye? Rit? Well, I boiled it, you know. Yeah. Not just tinted. Did you ever die by using some natural things like lichens or? No, I didn't. But that's what this woman down the uh, yeah, there's now here. Here's some of these embroidered quilts that I spoke about. Now here's one that's just a square. Like a starburst almost. Mm. Okay. Well, what gets me is that pile of cardboard patterns you have. For all those different shapes, you know. <laughs> really? That's a. Uh, some of those look well used. Some they've been used for, for a years. a long time, yeah. They've been used for years. I guess that's all the quilts there are in that. In that one. The calls how to quilt it. World without end. Shoe fly. Duck and ducklings. Steeplechase. How do they get steeplechase out of that? Don't ask me. The name of that one. It looks like a surveyor's target for, you know, one of those surveying rods. Yeah. And look at this one. The sampler. They're just different different ones. All of these traditional patterns. And they're all they're all squares and triangles. Did I read that uh, there was a tradition that uh, a quilt was given to a married couple somehow? The, the quilt was made by the mother and given to the married? Oh, the daughter when they were going to marry? Was, or did the daughter have to make her own quilt? Oh, there were um, there are dozens of things. Um, the family groups got together and gave them quilts. Well, of course, that's the only bedding they had. And yeah. They, they were, uh, and now there is another version of that made in a bigger square. What's that one, Sunburst? No, that's the uh, Drunkard's Path oh. business. Did you see how it's put together there? Look at this intricate thing. Star on top of the star. This is all the uh, the, the presidents of the United States oh, up wow. to date. What a quilt that would be. Gingham. Blossoms in blue. Gingham dog and the calico, calico cat. cat. Oh, let's look at that one. I've been that's I've been cute. Have that. you ever made that? No, but I've been. That's one of the ones that I've been wanting to make. Well, the cats. Sort of acting demure there, looking yes. away, and the and the dog is looking at the, the cat. The dog and the calico cat side by side in the chimney set. And that's all I can remember the old, uh, yeah. the old um, Well, that's how to make the eyes. They showed how to stitch the eyes. Yes. But you, you just draw that off the graph. Designs. Let's see, this is a 19. Well, this one has a traditional name, but the book's got all mixed. Oh, yes, this is Missouri Beauty. And that's another version of the Drunkard's Path again, there, you see. Okay. Would you say that's one of the more common patterns? That's the no. variation? Which is the most common quilt pattern? The log cabin? Just squares. No, Just log square. cabin is quite fussy to make. Now, here's a way of i putting them in entirely different. They put all the colors together. They haven't had a center. They have There's a center. 
of the thing. There's there's the dark. Well, that's a cross, and then they built up from it with little L's out of each angle of the cross. No, it's, it's, they're all made the same way, but it's just the way you sew them together. See, this this has sewn all of the the hook of the all the light ones have been put into one, it, 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 cornered in together. You see, this yeah, light yeah. and, and that one. light and that light, and then the dark ones are all pointing in together. Oh yeah, okay. Huh. Yeah. Oriel showing me that patch that describes what she was just telling us out of this catalog. Huh. Now you see that's put together like this. Yeah. Okay. All of the light. Yeah, yeah. Is this have you got many of these patches made up? No, I haven't. Somebody said that'll make a beautiful quilt and I said, Oh no, it won't. Because that's the line. I'm just gonna make a pillow out of that. Oh, yeah. I'll make it in time for the bazaar, I presume. Well, did you tell? Did you hear what I did? Yes. I sent some photographs off. Well, they, you know, that's I. You know, I haven't been too awfully enthusiastic about that Why? because if those people have been looking at um, at some of the beautiful quilts made by the, you know, the expert and this type of quilting, looking at them in fairs and and the like. This kind of a quilt's going to be. You're selling these short. I, I know I we are selling them short. No, I mean you're selling them short for quality too, but, not just price. But, those quilts are as nice as I have seen. Now. Yeah, but you haven't seen some of those other very special. Yeah, ones. but we couldn't afford those either. No. Uh, people could not afford those. But this is, this is the this is the ordinary. T now this is another uh, this is another Hawaiian effort. See the oh, yeah. you see the well, you told see me the that we didn't take this, but you told me that uh, the Hawaiians take some plants and then they let it on a bright sunny day. They let the shadow fall on something. Well, that's how they, they make some. That's the how shadow. they make some of their patterns. Yeah, patterns. and then they trace it. You can see lots of and ends and pieces that are in. Yeah, bananas on a tree. But look at the look at the uh, intricate the work. colors. I like Hawaiian colors. They yes. have a taste for colors. Their colors just splash right out at you. Just, the, look at that unicorn. All that work. What's that out of? Cloth? Filled. A unicorn out of, yeah? And stuffed. And Only an artist can capture a unicorn in our calendar contributing editor. Colette Wolf. Wolf. Colette Wolf has surely claimed the loveliest prize in the forest of fantasy. That would be, huh? Mm -hmm. Human imagination. I think that's what uh, younger people are appreciating now too. Is that uh, well, there's a wealth of uh, ways to express themselves. Well, and that's what these these women did with with their quilts, from the, from the strictly utilitarian things to. Um, they were works of art. They became art pieces. Then. Yes, but then, like our like the one my grandmother made, what was made out of the odds and ends. There were now you see here's another one of those made of these pieces, but it's made of very small. Roman stripe. And yeah. it's um, they haven't kept the woven effect of this. They've just made a, yeah. a general. But that's too busy for anything. Honest to goodness. Yeah, it doesn't please your eye, no. does it? It's it's too busy. There's no nothing in it that uh, concentrates your eye. No, it dazzles your eye. Yeah. I suppose that's what it's supposed to do. Now there's a, a very uninteresting, crazy patch thing. Because they haven't used any imagination or any bright colors in that. You need reds and greens yeah, and right. blues and things. That's what I like to get in a photograph, too. A red flower or a red shirt or something when I'm taking a picture. Yeah. That adds to it. What's that, one of those sunset books? Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Now, you can see the square, and it's crazy. Well, it's got a man. Is that Lincoln's face up there in the corner? I don't know who's, it's it just a block face, really, but every one of these squares, here's the size of the square right here, yeah. has an animal or a person yeah. or something. Yeah. Now, that one's too busy, too. Well, let's see if I can recognize any people. I'm sure that's Lincoln in the corner. It could be. There's a fox and a crow and an elephant and a dromedary. Just everything in them. Has anybody ever tried to take a giant photograph of, you know, of somebody and make a quilt out of it, I wonder? Like, uh, 
You know those photo murals you see on the walls these days? Oh, there's all kinds. I haven't shown you any of the mural things that have been done. In some of these, I've been trying to just keep the quilt. The quilt's coming your way. Oh, I wonder if I can find that one. Well, you know what we should have is some photographs of these before I yes. talk about. You know, someday, if I get tired of my other hobbies, <laughs> well, it might be fun. Have you ever heard of a man making a quilt? Not, well, I've not certainly usually, huh? heard of men helping with them. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, we have one. Uh, I wonder if I've got it over here. And this man drew, did the, his wife made the quilt, but he drew the design. And uh, I've used shown the materials. It was made over in the Okanagan. Uh -huh. I'm just sick of it. It's in color. Well, Oreo's got these quilt patterns stashed away all over the house here. No, I got them in the pile. <laughs> um, Perry wanted to go to see some beautiful quilts. He's down to um, his up, doc, Dr. Reed's and, uh, and um, um, Dr. Reed has quilts? Mrs. Mrs. Reed makes beautiful quilts. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Sellers, you have Mrs. Sellers down here. Mrs. Wayne Sellers? Yeah, no, not, that's Wayne and his brothers. Frida. Wayne and Frida are, 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 have the ranch up there. And this is the one down at the uh, Henry Road. And it's, oh, um, one oh of, the sons um, and daughters. Um, my niece, ne my nephews of uh, Wayne. The great nephews. Anyway, um, she makes lovely quilts. And she put a quilt in. Um, beautifully done into one of the fairs. I didn't get a prize, and I'm just sick about it. Well, I didn't get as much of a prize as I should have. All of the, um, all of the um, brands from all the various ranches all around the country. Oh, that would have been nice. Oh, it's a beautiful quilt. You know what happened? I told you about the stuff that was being knit by my relatives in Norway. Yes. Finally, Ingrid got a first place on one of her oh, okay. pairs of socks. But I wonder about those judges sometimes, you know? Oh. It, I, sometimes, I think it's killing an inter I heard one person over here say they'd never enter again. No. It was obvious that uh, somebody else's was better than the first, and, and uh, yet the one got the first. Well, I saw a beautifully made baby jacket, finely made, and very um, carefully done, and um, a fine yarn, and, and a really beautiful job done. And then there was a very sleazy, poorly made jacket, and it got first prize, and then I got second. Yeah. Well, there's such obvious miscarriages. Uh, you know, I don't know who they have for, for uh, you know, for is it being done on an anonymous basis? Are they judging? They're or are supposed they... to get people from out of town right? who are qualified. But they're getting all local judges, as far as I've I can I've been asked to judge in fancy work. Now I ask you. I mean, I enter every year myself. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. Really. That's, that's ridiculous, because yeah. I don't qualify. Right. I might be able to tell you that that's a beautiful job. Yeah. Now, one time I entered, well, I entered this, um... That doily you made? This doily. Yeah, yeah. Also, a Japanese woman from, from, um, Kohlmann or Tuolene, Kohlmann, I think, also entered a beautiful made, made doily. And mine got first prize, and I shouldn't have. Mine was more intricate pattern, but hers was much better done. Yeah. This was toward the time when I was first learning, and uh, or doing first. And you see, in the center, how distorted some of the yeah, some of those. She things. hadn't marked like that on on hers. The whole thing was uniform, huh? Oh yes. Yeah. And you see, it takes some takes uh, experience to um, the rest of this is just keeping it even. But it takes experience to pull those all in. Yeah. to make your center name. Yeah. Her center was beautiful, but this got first prize. Yeah. Obviously, Did somebody some, obviously somebody was dazzled by the fancy pattern. Yeah. Hers was a lovely pattern too. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a plain thing by any means. Yeah. And she may have known she was a Japanese and just and um, and uh, discriminated. Discriminated as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I would I would if the woman had been there 
you would have given her your ribbon. I would most certainly have. Yeah. But she had she had already gone, and the person that came to pick up her material was some um, a friend or something. Yeah. And I never saw her. But I I, I felt uh, you I felt, felt that, that through the years. I felt that all the way through the years. Yeah. Because yeah. it was most misjudged, as far as I was concerned. Mine had more intricate pattern, but hers was so beautiful. Well, how long does it take the women? How many you have up to 12, 15 women sometimes working? Well, now that one has been on for this two, two weeks ago. Well, it was on for one day, and then several came the next day. But there were only six of us. Oh. And uh, then, what was. Does, does Mrs. Root come around? Well, she does. She, oh, yes, she comes. She's really enthusiastic and she makes some beautiful books. She made that. Yeah. And um, that was to use of a lot of the odds and ends in our box. Yeah. And um, but two weeks after, we had another day. And there were some more, but there weren't too many. Because there was a lot of sickness and such like. Yeah. Well, there was two full days. And others have come in here and there, and I've got a lot. No, as far as I should photograph some more of these when you get them done and send them off to my friends. Have you ever thought of, of you know, those photographs could be sent down to some of these specialty shops down in Vancouver? And, or do you want to keep them with in the local community? You, but you people are really trying to earn some money with your quilt. Yeah, we're so. Making money, yeah. So the idea is that, you know, you should get what they're worth. Is this well, the one the man designed? No. Well, oh. this, is, this is an open oven lady. That she won prize with that. Smith's quilt is re-raffled. Re 10th anniversary of Gladys Smith's quilt story continues with the winning of the quilt by Miss Winifred Bramwell, supervising a knitting and outpatient department at Children's Hospital in Vancouver. At this year's winner of the annual raffle of the patchwork quilt, handmade by Glenn Smith of Summerlin for March of Dimes, the Children's Hospital re-raffled the beautiful needle craft. Tickets were sold to the staff at the hospital and an additional $120 was raised by bringing, was raised, bringing the total amount collected by the Smith quilt up to $650. The Smith quilt draw was made in Summerlin during January, and the Children's Hospital was not only the recipient of the proceeds, but also held the winning ticket on the quilt. Oh, is that interesting? It was just so beautiful, said hospital spokesperson Marie Rowe. We were concerned that if we used the quilt on one of the patient's bed, it would have been necessary to launder it much too frequently. In no time, it would have been ruined. That's when we decided to suggest to Mrs. Smith that a hospital raffle be held and give the staff an opportunity to win the quilt. Gladys Smith visited the patients at the Children's Hospital in the spring of this year. On this occasion, she was asked about the re-raffling idea and was enthusiastically supported. The Smith quilt has now found a special place in a special lady's heart and home. Miss Bramwell has been an employee of the hospital for the past 14 years and tells us that the quilt is the first thing she's ever won all her life. Oh, there's so they do what re raffle. Yeah, okay. To, to give the hospital staff yeah. a chance to win it. Yeah. Now there is a. Is this one of yours? No, this is all, these are all in the Okanagan. Indian pictograph quilt. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, some of those old paintings on the rocks are shown on this quilt. Oh, yes. Well, they're all paintings on the rocks, whether, whether you've seen them or not. Yeah. Now, there's there's another one that somebody's done of, of brands, but I think that Charlotte's was better. Now, here's the one the man... Oh, yeah, all the cattle brands are shown on this one. Here's the one that... Um, what an idea to put this cattle was designed, brands this on was, a quilt. Yeah, this was designed by uh, one of those men. I think it's one of those men, and it gives you an idea of some of the colors that are in it down there, I think. I think it gives the colors. Jed Irwin. Annual show of the Trail Art Club opened at Ted Anak Hall Thursday. Ted Anak. Yeah. 
Three Bigger Than Life Quilts by Christina Lake Resident, Beverly Reed. Wonder oh, if that could so. be related. Well, there was a write-up then somewhere else about that, yeah. and he designed that. And there's, there's part. It, it's velvets and satins almost mm -hmm. entirely. Yeah. yeah, real artwork. Big butterfly with a flower underneath. Bluebells or something there. That flower. Oh, they probably all sorts of things. Yeah, those are. What a great idea to have those cattle brands. I think that's a good Oh, I do too. I don't know whether Charlotte's kept hers or not, but I think, I think Mrs. Reed's go, go, uh, go back to Scotland an awful lot. And she's making the patterns up from Scottish quilt patterns? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think she said that their people didn't know anything about them at all. She said she was, they were fascinated with them, with her quilts. And I've seen some of them. There was something to be fascinated about, too. Well, what, does she use them or has she got them in storage? Well, she sends some to Scotland, I say. I don't know what they do with them there. She makes them here and yeah. sends them to Scotland, yeah. 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 And uh, she's brought her father. She's been here several times when she was first learning. She, did, she didn't know how this Did she learn from you? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And, um, and Charlotte. She and Charlotte were together a lot. And um, she's brought her father here. I don't know, I think her brother. Just hmm. see if here. Twice well, what's your favorite pattern of well, all of these? There's so many that. What's the favorite one you ever made? I mean, of all the quilts you've made, you does one stand out? No, not particularly. There are several standouts that have been beast to do, and were lovely when they were finished. But by the time I got through them, I wasn't really the least bit interested. In them. <laughs> It's like me. I, did, I, did Zelma tell you I made 120 flies of the same pattern? Oh, no. Did you 120. Really? I don't even want to look at that fly anymore. Oh. Too much of a good thing, whether it's strawberries, quilts, or whatever. Huh? Well, it's supposed to be a group effort. Some things you've got to do by yourself, and, or, or it doesn't come out even. And, now there's there is something that's used for quilts a lot, and that's that fan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just just squares with the, the fans, and then you you quilt. Well, you cut all those elements of the fan with your template, your cardboard template, right? Yes, the um, and then there. Has anybody ever made a table set with food? Like if you had a quilt with, uh, let's say, a Thanksgiving dinner set on it. Mm, you see pictures of them. People have made those sort of things? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be interested at all in those. Like a bird's eye view, you're sitting up on the ceiling yeah. looking down at it. <laughs> now that, when you get right down to look at it, you see what a curly cue that thing is? Mm -hmm. I want to show you. Looks like gears. Yeah. <laughs> there's another, there's one that's been made up. That's just a square quilt, huh? It might be square. Oh, there's Daddy Hicks. Huh. Oh, well, that is a complicated. Not any more than the double wedding ring. Well, this is a circle. And what are these supposed to be in here? I don't know what the, what the significance of any of those are. But it looks like it could be a flower, you know, looking down on top of a I flower. Don't know. I don't know. That's something we had to do in a botany class. I, you know, I swear that some of those things we did in, in science could be applied. Oh, I come across here uh, uh, hex symbols, and I had it laid out to show you, and I guess I flipped it. Hex symbols, but there aren't any of them on that. No. That one, optical illusion, huh? Yeah. The lights, the darks, the tumbling yeah. blocks there. Yeah. The way that works out, it looks like, well, you know what that reminds me of? The side of a pyramid. Egyptian pyramids. And yet, that. and yet, it's it, it's be a simple little thing, and it's just the way you put them together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does Gwen make quilts? She ever? Uh, she helps me. Yeah, it would th I would think she'd be a natural with her geometry. She oh, that. well, she, but the, but the things that she does are, are much more uh, intricate and such like. Now, there is one version of this thing. And this curly cue thing has been put on, but look, look at what it is. 
Yeah, when you break it down, huh? Yes, when you break it down, it's how you put it together. Yeah. yeah. There's one plain square and one square that's made up of several other ones. It's uh -huh. the way you put it together. Uh -huh. And you know, it's t it's taken it's taken uh, real something rather to uh, the snail's trail, they call it. Yeah. And it's huh. taken real imagination and uh, and stuff like to to work those things out along. Sure. Yeah. There's the snail's trail again, right yeah. here in the back. Yeah, just the way but those little squares. Just think of the here. absolute precision that must be for in each one of those. Well, I think I better stick to darning my socks and patching knees in Carl's <laughs> pants for a while. <laughs> well, the Carl will keep you busy. Because <laughs> I think maybe the the accuracy on some of this might be a little bit, a little bit beyond my sewing ability. Well, we're going to have to do some things. I think that's a That's a cute one. <laughs> In a way, I think that's I've a piece of that, that daddy fix down there, isn't yeah. it? Isn't that the little bit there? Right on the corner, yeah. yeah. Could be, yeah. Oh, that's just enough. Yeah. Well, you still haven't given me an estimate on the number of quilts you've made. I have no idea. I couldn't begin to tell you. Well, would you say you made, you said 1917 you started? Uh, Oh, yes, that's the first time. You must have averaged at least five a year. No, I haven't averaged that. And I yet, mean, other, considering years, other years we've made a whole lot more than that. Yeah, but considering when you had your kids and family, you wouldn't have been making quilts. Yes, we did, because we needed the bedding. Would you make one or two a year then? Oh, might have. Yeah. Some would give you a better idea of uh, some of those then. Now look how simple some of those are. And just mm. thing is just done this in the color, with all the quilting mm. around them. Have you ever seen the pictures they used to make that had a sort of a quilt effect? They'd put cotton behind uh, certain parts and raise them out, puff them out, and then they'd be flat in the background. I remember the Cottontail Rabbit series that was made that way. Well, I've seen a lot of those sort of things. Mm -hmm. You know, Gwen designed one of those things for, for um, the school. And uh, she, uh, it's a duck, a good sized duck. It's one of those flannelette things, you know, you can press the things on. Mm -hmm. She made a wardrobe for it, for all kinds of weather and such like, and, and the kids in that group, every day they come to school, they dress it up for whatever. Oh, yeah? They press yeah. on it. There's a whole big box of it. Yeah, things. right. And if it starts to rain or snow during the day, while they, somebody gets up and and, uh, and puts the duck in, in clothing for the, for that. And it's uh, an overcoat or something, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Isn't that a clever idea? How old are these kids? Oh, I first graders, second graders? They're grade? most probably first graders or yeah. second graders, somewhere along there. But Gwen's done dozens of things like that. She's done one thing that um, is really, it took a long time and took a lot of help from different ones telling her what to do and, and some of the teachers finding out what she was going to do. One fellow got the plywood, for instance, and things like that. But it's it would take in that space there between the... About Five by eight. Something like maybe maybe not uh, as deep as that, but there's a hole. She told me how the the little the things for the holders for the, for the cards. I, think, I don't know, it was a thousand pieces of it or eight hundred or something more like that. But it's it's a, a sports board to, uh, that anybody in the school they can pick out the day and the, the sport and the, the team and the opposing team and the hour and the place where it's being played. All those tickets are all made out and all of them fitted up on the board. It's a bulletin board. And so it keeps track of sporting events going All on. the sporting events for that school. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. And it, it took Like a, a big giant bulletin board for it, everybody. It's bulletin board, yes. Yeah. And uh, another thing she's done is an illuminated um, um, for the first graders, for letters, A for apple, kind of one she didn't put apple on it. But they're, they're put on, they're drawn first, and she's made them as humorous as she can, without distorting things too much. She didn't like to really distort things. And um, in colors, and they're shellacked, and they're old, and all this sort of thing, and then they've tried to get her to patent it. She won't. Yeah. Why not? She said not she's just working for the school. They think it's good enough to be patented. Well, they've yeah. been trying to get her patented for several years. Huh? But she does that kind of thing all the time, John. Yeah, her mind is always active. Yeah. Huh. Well, for instance, when she worked, when her kids were going to school, she worked for the um, 
for the Vernon Winter Carnival. And she designed... Clothes? No, not clothes, but costumes for the various... Uh, and made, cut them out, and, and, and when the mothers could make them, they did, and they didn't. she made them, and she made the pattern them all the time. And also planned out skating routines and all this kind of thing. Well, there's a bunch of little girls. This one's really interesting to tell you about. They weren't all Japanese, but it was a Japanese motif, and they had, come on, it's an, and they had parasols, you know, and, uh -huh, and they, uh -huh. they, all the weaving in and out and all that kind of thing, you know, they did on their skates. Yeah. But when it came to time, that big Japanese sash, you know, the big OB, OBI, it's there wasn't a Japanese mother, and there's lots of them around. There wasn't a Japanese mother who knew how to tie. <laughs> so Gwen had to work one up. Yeah, and, and figure the, it out. And, and then the mothers made their children. Mm -hmm. and obey, but mm -hmm. there wasn't a Japanese mother. They're it all second to, second to third generation Japanese, you see. Isn't that, yeah. Isn't, isn't that, that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of something that related to that. I thought it was something. Well, that's how fast those old traditions burn out. You know where they're going now to find stuff about the Indians of uh, the West Coast? <laughs> about the old <laughs> Berlin, <laughs> Germany. Yeah, right. The, the of early course, so many things were taken. Yes, taken and yeah. taken, yes. The real authentic stuff is in the museums in Berlin. In Berlin. Isn't that something you it's, have to go back there to find It just makes you that. sick to think of how things have been carved off, but they've done yeah. it in every country, in every generation, yeah. in every yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah. The best totem poles are, I think, in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. And all this small stuff that could be carted by sailing vessels was taken back and put into those Berlin. And, and, uh, and I read about the story. This guy went up the coast. He was, I, the reason I got interested was, it was in this uh, book about uh, the, the settlement in Bella Coola, British Columbia. This guy was hired by the Germans. He happened to be a Norwegian. He was hired by the Germans to come across and pick up these artifacts and just went right up the coast. And in the best, you know, he got stuff that he really got in trouble for. You know, their, their mystical stuff, their dance uh, masks and special rattles and stuff like that that were only supposed to be for certain secret meetings of certain clans. He was carting it away. And, you know, it was under penalty of death that some of that stuff would be removed. You know. Well, it's against the law for anyone to own, own argillite, except the hide is right now, isn't it? And to mine it, you mean? Or? Yes, to mine it and to work yeah, it. Yeah. You mean an, uh, a white person can't work argillite? No, I think they can't. Oh. I think they've got it sold down because there's so much of it been taken and, and used and misused. Yeah, and. Yeah. Here's a sleeping huh. bag. Oh, yeah. For so quilts and friends. Yeah, a quilted sleeping bag. Yeah, it. I almost feel like it's criminal to use those beautiful quilts you've, you've given me. But, you know, that I got from the church. And yet they just, they're just quilts. They're nothing anything special about any of them. Yeah. Well, that's it. I think some artists, you know, they, they want their stuff to be used. And it means really making it is the thing. Preserving it isn't so much important. The, the whole... The thrill of it is is in the conception and the making it. Mm -hmm. After it's done, they could care less. Well, they do, and they treasure them. They treasure them, like my like my. Um, when I was a, a, a child, all the old women had, uh, or so many of the older women had um, um, velvet, um, cra crazy quilts yeah. with all the fancy stitching and everything, and they were used. But they were used carefully and not allowed to be on the floor and this kind of yeah. thing. And uh, I made my mind when I was a little youngster that someday when I got to be a grandmother, I was going to have a grandmother's quilt. So far, I've made three. Now there's there's just squares. That's called round the world, and they're all sorts of sizes. Somebody's mm -hmm. made for the big bed and the bed. But the sleeping bag is sure. Right here. There's one called Broken Dishes. One of these patterns. There's another version of Log Cab. Called Moon Over the Mountain. Now 
And you see, there's your bear claw made up into a cushion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something about that design. There's all my modern modern yeah. adaptions. Those are. I suppose there are dictionaries of quilt patterns and stuff like oh, that. Oh yes, mm -hmm. and the, some of those expert quilters that, that do nothing but that that kind of thing and have class and such like. They've got great they've got great um, uh, libraries of them. Mm -hmm. Does Mrs. Reed, Dr. Reed's wife, have a lot of stuff like that? I don't know. I don't know what she's got. I haven't been up for for over a year. She's an artist, though. I've been in classes where she was interested in art, mm -hmm. various things. Trish Reed is a new woman. Yeah. Look at this. You want to see something old? I got this from the guy in uh, oh, yeah. Hardy Brothers, Hardy of uh, England, fishing stuff. I got that from the Belgian. Well, those sort of things were all boys had them if they could possibly afford What, a right? knife with all those? With everything in it, yes. Yeah. Big rocks out of the horse's hoofs. And, 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 and I was popular moderns. with the little boys because I had a, a, a jackknife that my father kept razor sharp. Oh boy. My mother always had a pocket in my skirts. Yeah. No other little girls had. And you had a knife in it. And I had an, I always carried this knife and it was sharp. Huh. So if the boys wanted a sharp knife, they came to you. Huh? They came to me, yeah. I didn't let it get on my reach either. Yeah. I never learned it. I had a succession of them. But I grew up with sharp utensils. And uh, someone said, oh, I'm a sharp knife. The kids might hurt themselves. None of our youngsters ever had to have a stitch with a sharp knife. Right? It's the dull ones where you're forcing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same with saw blades and things like that. If you sure. got a dull bandsaw or a dull... Uh, an, an axe? A dull axe is a, a, a weapon, murderous a, thing. A murderous sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. It's some. Um, it's on those colored velvet. And there's bands. Of, there's one here. I didn't show you at all. And uh, there's doilies for the. Tatted and crocheted knitted doilies all over those rose colored doilies. You know those doilies that I got from the church at that bazaar at one time? Mm -hmm. Boy, I, I've got to put them in a picture frame. I think that's the only way to really. Was, you gave me a yellow one? Was yours yellow and Zelma's white or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. See, my. my um, it's very like that. This is the sort of thing I did during my. Yeah, velvet would be hard to join, wouldn't it? Because of its nature, the type of cloth? Uh, well, you based everything. Just yeah. No, this so is, this is grandmother's loose. flower garden. Look at the way it's Yeah, it's look at that together. red. And this, just cut paper. And then you applique whatever design you... And then you wash it and the paper comes off? No, no, you, you, you use the paper for to make the design. Then you, then you trace it and... Oh, those are the snowflakes. Yeah. Bad, cutting them up. Yeah. yeah. I've just seen that now. Well, there's that hex. Um, yeah. You know, I use that. I use that technique a lot when I'm making equal halves on plaques for trophies and things like that. I just fold a piece of paper, draw my design half on it, you know, yeah. and then I cut that out and then I open it up, put it on the wood, and use a bandsaw and cut out the plaque. Sure. And I use it, uh, well, I don't know if I showed it to you, but I made an old cabinet uh, scroll work cabin carpet. And I, I repeated the design by just flopping it around. Something like you did on your quilt the other day with that carpet was kind of... Oh, wow, sunflowers, huh? I made that. Yeah? It's just exactly like that. Are those sunflowers? Oh, I don't know. They're just uh, stylized flowers of some yeah. sort. You made that one? Yeah. Gave it from a granddaughter. Her mother mm -hmm. supplied the materials, and I made it. I listen to all my books, but it's more yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Well, because they, they were... They decorate them some they, way. They, for, for the rich and such yeah. like. Yeah. They, uh, and um, 
I read things about silken quilts, piles of silken quilts. Well, you'd almost think that they couldn't have avoided decorating, decorating yeah, them yeah. like that. Well, I had a chance to see at the P&E some of their embroidery work. Oh, panels five feet wide and two and a half feet deep with uh, gold thread, red silk, uh, black silk, just blazes of color. Yeah. And the stitches, there must have been, you know, they overlaid these tiny threads, one on top of the other, yeah. you know, built it up like siding on a house. You know. yeah. And, yeah. But then I've heard, too, that some of them went blind. Oh, yes. Well, look at the, um, um, chi the Chinese, I guess, originated the cross stitch, and yet, and yeah. uh, more modern times, the Swedish people did it, and the, and the um, But the Swedish cross stitch is a giant thing. Well, in a way, and then the Ukraine. I mean, Angela, a little, um, doily for her, for her, um, Chest. And yeah. she made me, she said that was an authentic. She made this? Yeah, she made yeah. it. Yeah. This is a, a little pin cushion or something, huh? Oh, yes, a little cushion. She said, don't you use it? And I said, well, I, I, I got some stick pins in it, but I'm about where I see it every day. Yeah. Mm. And she didn't see you this time. And oh, yes, I saw her. Oh, you did see her oh, at I the church? Her. I saw her at the church. Oh, good, good. I, I this is Angie Skomorowski's work, yeah. the Ukrainian cross-stitching. Yes, and she said that was genuine, authentic design, color, and materials, and everything. Everything's the same. Yeah. Yeah. See, I gave her... You gave her one of these doilies? I gave her one like this, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you... Are these... These have names, too, or...? Oh, not that I know of. The patterns? Well, I'll tell you, I sure treasure that one I got from you of yours. And that's Tatty. My daughter made this crochet, and these are knitted. They're all, all the same, these different all boilers, the same huh? design. I, I did them in different weights and, and the size of, of um, needles just to see which I like best. How do you keep them round? Well? How do you keep that symmetry? You know, that stuff's laying on your lap. How in the world can... Oh, well, the knitting... Or do you do it in a... It looks like a... It, it's it started in the center. It's just done like, like a sock. But uh, and if you stick to the, the stitches, they can't help it not even. But when it comes to washing them, now, you get them a place that something you can stick needles into. I use my um, ironing board. And uh, I put in a pin in there and a pin in there. A pin in here and a pin in here. And keep stretching them. I don't mm -hmm. have it even and there it's starched and then i don't uh, take the needle I don't take the pins out until it's absolutely until it's dry. It's dry and then yeah. you just pick it up <coughs> yeah well they just turn into a, <coughs> a shapeless mess if, if they were washed. it looks like a pile of old string yeah yeah <coughs> there's nothing that, that shows it's it's a character less than it and then it's a dry they went wet <coughs> well now over at the beauty parlor i'd seen this um and it's a doily, and she had a vase sitting on it, and I pulled it out of time to and thought, oh, that's better than I've done, but my goodness, it should be blocked. You can't iron them to come out right. They don't, you need to block them with pins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, you need rust proof pins. But anyhow, I thought I couldn't stand in on it. Somebody give it to her. I don't know whether they'd want or not, but it didn't look like anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have let anybody see it. You wouldn't it. have displayed it that way, huh? And, uh, so I said to her one day, I said, would you like me to take that home and block it properly? He really is. And Corey's an offhand sort of person. She was my last Who? Corey who? Corey uh, Smith. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I suppose so, she said. It isn't right, is it? And I said, no. Did you iron it? She said, well, no, I washed it and pulled it around. She said, it's, it doesn't look too good. And I said, no, it doesn't really look <laughs> like it should. Yeah. So. I took it home and I washed it and starched it and blocked it. Mm. It was bigger than this. Really? It came out that big? Huh? Oh, I knew it would. Yeah. And it was like that. And gorgeous. So I carried it over like this to it. was stiff, you know. Like yeah. like this, like this. And I came in with it. Big much tension. It's pretty, isn't it? 
And I said, Lori. She says, that isn't it, is it? And I said, yeah, it is. And I said, now what are you going to do with it? You haven't got a surface in here big enough to it. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. She said. Yeah. So she took it home, but I don't know what she's yeah, done with yeah. it. But yeah. she said, I didn't know that could happen to a neat thing. And I said, sure does. I said, all oh, that needs to be yeah. properly done. Yeah. And I said, I do know how to properly well, do it. Well, right. She hadn't a clue to do how She hadn't a clue, yeah, yeah. no. Well, that's one of those arts. Well, know. she wanted me to uh, knit her some dotties for the... I said, Corey, they'll drive you crazy. I said, somebody will ruffle up and that's all this. And then I said, it takes you an hour at least, or maybe longer, just to block one of these things. And I said, that you haven't got time to do that. Because mm -hmm. she rides her, she rides and trains her horses and, mm -hmm. and dogs, and she runs the beauty parlor, and she has her home and everything, and they're building on it. She said, no, I haven't. And I said, crocheted ones, you can iron. And they take just a few minutes, but they do need to start them. And they got starch. And I said, well, spray starch. I said, my daughters use spray starch because they can't be bothered with the boil starch. And I use boil starch because I can't be bothered with the spray starch. <laughs> so I said, it's, it's a matter of that, but it won't yeah. take you any more than a few minutes. But I said, not a little boy. Yeah, yeah. I said, it will take you so long. Well, she said, well, let me give that idea up. And I said, you're far better to get some of the little plastic things. And I said, you know, slosh them up and down the water. And outside of a cigarette burn, nothing can happen to them. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, for her place of business. For, for the place of business. Well, yeah. I'd be afraid of somebody carting one of those homemade ones off, too. You know, well, they could easily do it. Yeah. Of course, they couldn't take that one off after I uh, blocked it. But yeah. they could easily have done it with, with that yeah. one before. Yeah. But you know, there was a woman up in this house, the other side of Amy's. And she had something on, and I'm sure it was a darling. It was, it was, she had it hung as a, a plaque in her window for all the time they were there, two or three years. I think she was on a piece of... There was of something like that next door here, on Askos. Or whatever. There was something for a long time, two or three doors down here. Well, that's the next door name. Yeah, yeah, that's the one you're talking that's about. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. And it was, it was, blo it was on to something like this. And, yeah. and I think it must have been the doily. From right the in the sun every day. Yeah. Oh boy, I thought. Well, they do rot out in time, yeah. but then... But at least it was displayed. People saw it and enjoyed well, it. I, she, I thought... Uh, she enjoyed it. She must have enjoyed it doing, having it. Mm -hmm. I, but um, anyway, that, but mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't asked Corey. She isn't the sort of person that, that I can chat with, because we have nothing in common. I go there, and she's nice and pleasant and all that, you mm -hmm. know. But... Um, Your interests don't line up. Not a bit, no. Yeah. And uh, she's interested in her horses. Well, she knows all. She knows horses and farms and ranches and what. And my my ranch business is more than that. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> the look on her face when she, she says. That isn't, isn't it. Isn't it? Yeah. Because I just have them. I because I take things over there once in a while that I've done that I've been working mm -hmm. on them and I bring them over sure. and they're finished, yeah. you know. And uh, she says, "Yes, it's pretty, isn't it?" You know, just a very indifferent sort of way because she thought what it was, and she didn't know what nurse she was going to do with it. That's like Carl when I get when he gets dressed up. Can't quite tell if that's the same kid. When yeah. my mother gets him spruced up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. You have to look twice to recognize who it was. And I am certainly treasure that. I guess so. Because of lots of fine work in that. And it probably took her longer than it did me to um, knit my the dory I gave her. Oh no. no. Oh yes, I think so. I know. I know some. Of course, this isn't all over. This. This is. Yeah, the, right. The, it's the, just part. But just the same. That's painstaking work, and you've got to count. Each. Did she put that in a ring when she did that? I have no idea what she did. She must have had some way to anchor it down. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been. Oh, you can. But cross stitch has got to be done a certain way. A certain yeah. way. Always, and otherwise it's a mess. Did I ever show you the slides of the Norwegian national costumes? Or not? I don't not think heavy so. Heavy black belt or velvet. Boy, those are interesting costumes. I've got maybe three or four. I've got two Icelandic ones. Uh, I've got the Valdres, and I've got the. Uh, uh, Hardanger Fjord. Hardanger Fjord. That's that's what Mrs. Stenvold does. Her, her, you know, she does Hardanger. Yeah, she got that from her mother-in-law. Yeah. But the person that really did the Hardanger 
was uh, Mrs. Jacobson. Um, um, oh, he's retired from the... Coil. 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 Yeah. Oh, Helen. Her curtains were all hard to hang her. Helen's? Helen's mother's. Oh, she yeah. lives... It, that's a treasure house down there. Where? Where she lives, right next to the um, Princeton Manor, or whatever it is, that place is next to the Over Lady. Mm -hmm. She lives in, in her mother's house. Mm -hmm. And the scenes, and her mother could do them without Even without drawing them, them yeah. things yeah. like this. Her heart, uh, your kitchen curtains were hard anger. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. yeah, imagine. I like that kind of, but these costumes, they're handed down, mother to daughter. You know. Yeah, well, and when you think of it, there were no heat much. Mm -hmm. It was in cold country. Well, heavy and you clothing. You had to keep warm. Yeah, heavy clothing was it. But these were national costumes. They weren't. They bring them out on the uh, what is it? The seventeenth of May, I think, yeah. is our na national day. Well, the twenty-fourth of May and the twenty-fourth of June is, is Midsummer Day, but there's maybe a one before that. Yeah. Well, they got a one for the day the sun peers above the uh, horizon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they have great bonfires and celebrations for that. Then they have the May one. Those are the only, well, then the usual, Easter, Christmas, you know. For some folklore, the story probably wouldn't interest you very much. And But I just remember the folk, folk part of it. But there was an island off, I don't know if it was Norway or Sweden, but it's somewhere up in those northern waters up in there. <coughs> and. Uh, the clothing they have to have, and such like, because they only wash once a year. And their attics were just full, starched and iron clothing. And, and they, they did it as a community community effort. And the men man, manned the, the, uh, the big mangles and, and, oh, yeah. uh, and So once a year when it was warm enough, they washed all their clothing. Yes. And they had to have clothing to fill in. And it piled up dirty. Sounds like my want laundry. <laughs> But it, it, the, the life on that, and they... they La Fotens. No, she had to... Um, Selma, she, Selma's got the book. <coughs> yeah, I've read that book of hers, and The La Fotens. The Cod Fisherman? No. Really? Oh, okay. There's a farm. Well, I don't know what they did, but the woman was a widow. No, she wasn't a widow, but she married very badly. And uh, she had a big bunch of children, and she had to do all the work. And the... The ways out to the cow barns and such like, the snow was so deep that they only they, they could only tunnel. They yeah, tunneled. They had to go underneath. They, had to go, they, they just could tunnel yeah. from the house to the. Like moles and yeah, mice that kind and stuff of thing. like that, yeah. And th it must be in a very northern island. Yeah. I don't know where. The Arctic. It was above the Arctic Circle, I'll bet. <coughs> Sounds like the Lofotens. Although, That's I have not, not the heard. Name. That's I've not, not the name. heard that the snow collects there. See, it's on that current. And actually, there's not so much snow gathered in that area. Well, this was heavy snow, and uh, maybe it's on the other side. But um, I've forgotten the name of the book. I've read it. I think I've had it twice. It's on the head. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very interesting world, boy. You know. And one of the um, a lot of it, and one part of it is devoted to the. The annual big laundry. <laughs> I can imagine. Imagine what that pile of laundry was. And the like. piles and piles of starched petticoats. Huh? This kind of well, think of the clothing they had to invest in. Yes. But yeah. A lot of that clothing was hand woven and uh, would last for generations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They beat it on rocks sometimes to clean it in some places. Yeah. I, I, remember, that. I remember a Mr. Credo that used to be here. He was a um, mining engineer at one time. He was in South America. And he said, women did beautiful jobs of laundry, but they laundered everything. And they did it all the same way. And he had a, he had a, um, a special cap that he liked. And he <coughs> oh, no, they got a other, hold of it? Somehow or other, they got a hold of it one time. Oh. It was pounded to an absolute pulp. He said there wasn't. He said <laughs> the, the cap was all there, but it was yeah. completely yeah. unwearable and beautifully clean. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds oh, like dear. this. This is uh, Les Fripp that lives out in Tulumi. He bought this real beautiful hat in the 20s or something like that. And it cost him 20 bucks, which was like a week's wages. Oh, yeah. And so he had 
And for beautiful. a rancher, he wouldn't maybe have that much money. <laughs> yeah, and he had this hat, and he hung it on the, a set of deer horns over his front door. And so when uh, when his wife got this pet robin, the robin took up residence in that hat. <laughs> and the robin loved cottage cheese, so you imagine what went, went through that that robin, you know, yeah. and into that hat. Well, well he, he was probably, a darn fool to leave it outside to start with. It was in the house. The robin yeah. was in the house. Oh, oh. Hanging on a on a set of antlers of his, you know. Yeah. And the robin decided that's a good place to sleep. So it roosted there. And of course, everything was left in the hat. He went to pull that hat down one day and found it full of robin droppings, you know. Just stars white on the inside. <laughs> he took it outside and flung it across. <laughs> it was gone. I mean, how long ago was that? Oh, that was in the 30s, I guess. I may have seen that hat. Oh, that was we used to go, when Zelma and I were up to, uh, went to me one time, we were up there for a month. We had hired a cabin together, and then our husbands came weekends. Oh, you rented a cabin? And, and uh, to me, and yeah. uh, we went to Fripps every day for milk and eggs and cream. Yeah, milk you probably milk. saw the hat. Oh, I could easily have seen the hat. Yeah, well, he wore straw ones, but this is a beautiful felt one. Yeah. Like a Stetson or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. Well. Jeepers, I'm thinking of what I'm going to have for supper for Carl. I've got a roast, and then I've got two half-eaten ones in the fridge. One's pork. I'm never going to buy a shank of pork again. That stuff is terrible. There's nothing on it. It's all bone and gristle and fat. There's no meat on it. Well, it must have been a front quarter. Yeah, oh. pork. Never no, again. No, not a front quarter. Not a front quarter. Oh, that was another lesson I learned the hard way. That and the carrot tops. So anyhow, I'm going to on the ranch. Yeah. Before I learned to make that quilt, we uh, he was an old Alberta, Montana cowboy. And you were camp. in Montana for a while? No, no, this was down below Carameas, but oh, he yeah. had been in his young days. Yeah. But before there was a line in any big, but he paid much attention to between mm. Montana and, mm. and Alberta there. Yeah. And his home was in Alberta, and that's where she was where he met her, and uh, but they did all sorts of things of the old, of the old ways, because yeah. his, his people were, were German descent too, and uh, he, um, he butchered a pig every so often. No, he, he butchered his pigs when they're 125 pounds, and he had a, a thing about white pigs. If they were born with a spot, um, he sold the, the pig. And there were lots of Chinese in the earlier days, you know, around and working on ranches and such like. And so the, uh, some, someone was always keeping an eye on the sows. When they were about to farrow, mm -hmm. they, were, they were there. And uh, they got piglets for not very much money. Oh, and they had a white spot if on they, No, no, a dark, a, black, a dark spot. Oh, a dark spot, so, yeah. And, and we, he, he just had this against the pig that had a dark spot? He didn't have it against it. He just liked white pigs. Oh, yeah. And we had, uh, in, the, well, in the winter, you had to keep them confined. But in the summer, they were, um, Pen was right down to a small creek, and uh, their walls were right in the edge of this little creek because there was no one below. So they could get water. And they could go down water. Got, yes, but they've got to wallow, you see. It. All right, that mud. They need they've that. got. They've got to wallow. Yeah. And uh, they're like an elephant. They've got to keep their, their heights. Skin, yeah. in. And uh, we had the most beautiful pigs you ever saw. They were always so pink and white, and yeah. and. Uh, they go and wallow. One old sow fair had sixteen piglets. And uh, there was nobody, the, the hired men were, were away and such like. He says, Orla, they have to help me. He says, come out and says, I've got to get those piglets out of that pen for some reason. Yeah. And the fowl was a yeah. savage beast. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got them on a wool sack. You know what a wool sack is. Mm -hmm. They're six feet long and they're about that wide. And they're double no, over. You see them, we pack the wool. At that time we could sell them when we had, when they did the sheep. They, they could sell them, but they sold them in and one of the hired men would get up and stamp the wool as they put it in. He was six feet tall, and he would be <laughs> right in the oh, sack yeah, to start yeah, with. Yeah. And but the fact that it was it had to be packed in there. Well, that's wasn't sense in having them. Yeah. Not much sense in having them not packed. Yeah. So he dance up and down so the wall. Yeah. But anyway, the uh, what was I, was I telling you? Well, you bought the pigs. Oh yes. Well, you got them in a wool sack. He got, put, we got them on the wool sack, and I had two, two on, uh, two ends of it, and he had two ends of it, and all those piglets in it, 
because he wanted to change the cell from that farrowing pin to another one. Uh -huh. And uh, he, had, he had a great big stick. And we dashed for the gate and got out of it with her snorting and he'd have taken Riddle. a leg off you. Oh, know? yeah. And then he got them into into the other pen and uh, everything was quiet, quiet in this little wee while. But I'll never forget that beating that star to the gate with 16 piglets on this wool sack. Oh. <laughs> and he had one end of it and I had yeah. the other. Yeah. And uh, I had never helped with anything like that before. But you see, an awful lot of my knowledge of, of farms and, and ranches and like that is borderline. Yeah. Always have lived in a small town where our friends yeah. were on ranches, yeah. or else I was on. Yeah. But we, but he butchered about three to five pigs at one time when they were 125 pounds. Well, the lard and the sausages and the head cheese and the scrabble and the hams and the bacon and all oh, this kind of thing. Yeah. And You'd have piles of them. Oh, it's so certainly, good though. Oh, marvelous. Yeah, and I've eaten that pig that comes from a fresh. Freshly butchered uh, on a farm. These Johnsons back in in northern Minnesota there. Weren't many people raising pigs, but they raised one. Every day out with the bucket of leftovers. I'd stay out at their place for a while and feed those leftovers to this great huge pig. And then I remember coming back about a year later and we had some of that. Oh, was that good? Of course, she was a good old Swedish cook. Man, could she cook. <laughs> My dad, it, it embarrassed me. Well, maybe, <laughs> but my dad would rave about her cooking, and my mother would feel, oh, she, you know, <laughs> my mother's a good cook too. But yeah. you know, they she'd rave about uh, Mrs. Johnson. Well, there was a Swedish cook here. She was the school janitress for a long time, and she she had shoulders like most Huge. men haven't yeah. got, yeah. and uh, she could. It was all coal and wood firing in those days, and she yeah. could take a shovel of coal and spread it out just like. Beautifully like yeah, any fire. Yeah. But she said when she was um, she was I think an orphan. And she was raised by her grandfather and on a farm and they did their um, all of their um, reaping and everything was sides. Oh, yeah, and he sure. made a small one for her. And she, she learned to reap right along with him when yeah. she was just a little youngster. Yeah. Well that's where she developed her shoulder. And she came out to Yuk the Yukon during the Gold Rush? Yeah. Yeah. And cooked up there? Well, I don't know what she did. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, she was older here, and I don't think she was up there for so long. She came at the tail end of it, more like. And uh, oh, could she cook? Yeah. And I remember we when we had our ladies' aid, and we tried to keep the thing well, within reason about you know having having tea in the afternoon. But you'd go to her house. And uh, there was supposed to be a fine if we had more than one thing. Uh huh. Because. We knew everybody could cook more or less, yeah. and was a, it got it, it got to be, be such a, a it got deal. to be a yeah. show off. Yeah. Yeah. And we had business to do. We built yeah. that church and all this kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, <coughs> we worked. But anyhow, one time she came in and she had her daughter behind her and trays, great huh? big tray. She said, "There," which was a five-dollar bill on, which was a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. She said, "There's the fine." She said, "Imagine keeping a Swedish cook." Down to one thing, she said. Now eat. <laughs> we, we wouldn't take her fine, of course, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I've got. I, have I ever given you a piece of that um, of um, a date cake that I have? It's oranges and, and some dates and walnuts, and it's turned over and it's, it's in an orange glaze on it. I think you've had it. Ah, that orange glaze. I remember yeah, that. Well, that, that. That was really one of one of Lena's uh, that was recipes, good, yeah, and yeah. I've got several. What was her name? Well, she was, I don't know how it was when she came from Sweden, but she was Lena Berquist. She had married a Swede, and then she was Lena, she was a widow for a long time, and she was Lena Graham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it is, that same thing that got spoiled rotten over there. It's she married um, Stan Garrison's, Ernie Garrison's grandfather. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was a widower, too. Yeah. yeah. But those pigs, and we, we had barrels, of brine, and so we, the the front quarters. We had the ranch was owned by a millionaire from Vancouver. He was a, a, a contractor, mm -hmm. and he had this ranch. And for those few years, that for the years that I was down there, Mr. Crooker <coughs> was running it. And so all the side bacon, and all the, the real hands, 
went out to him because Mr. Cripper was famous in the valley for his for his hams and bacons, and uh, it was, it, he said it was always in that brine. He didn't have. He just took it right out and ate it. Did, but, right but, the, the but the brine, I mean, was it was a um, salt brine. Yes, but it had, he used brown sugar as well. Oh, mm -hmm. And but anyhow, there was nobody around could do bacon and ham like, and I've helped stir those wash yeah. boilers of oh, brine yeah. and and. Um, but there was a lot of the, the pork was put down in the brine for so long, and all the hams and bacons and everything was put in, put in for a while, and then they were smoked. And you realize, of course, you're making me hungry. Oh, yes. <laughs> and me, me too. And uh, when we butchered the sheep, we had almost no beef, because he had some beef, but uh, it was it wasn't part of the ranch business. Like, the, the, the main one. thing was pigs. We had a hundred, hundred sheep. And they raised a lot of, um, we raised all the um, um, grain and such like for, yeah. the, for the animals. There were a lot of horses and such like. And Where was this ranch? Between uh, Caramius and between um, Costin and Silk uh -huh. And And uh, huh. it went right from the railroad track right down to the river. Big ranch. And we had. Um, I still have to remember, Oriel, to show you this picture. I'm sure you you know this guy. I've got it. I've got it in one of my books. You know, you never do that. Never put it in the pages of your book. Something that you want. No. You can never remember which. No, book and also it goes out to somebody and and uh, and gets dropped on the floor and yeah, what all yeah. when they borrow the book. But it's somebody from Costin that you would know. Well, maybe not, because um, I came home in 1918. I was there from 16 to 18 on that ranch. Yeah. So that's a long time ago. Yeah. Well, and this is an old it, family. It's, it's an old family. I know what, that. You don't know the name? I think name the man's of name is Costin. Well, I knew the, all the Costins. That's why I'm sure you'd know of this guy. There's one, there's one Costin still alive. Well, this guy would be, let's see. I'm going to guess this guy's 55 or 60. Well, then, then it must be one of, one of Kent's sons. If there's one that's 65, around 65, and the others are all younger, you know, just, just mm -hmm. like right that. Right down the ladder. Huh? Right down the ladder. And then the girl is last, I believe. <coughs> she lives over in um, Sussex. Yeah. Or Oliver. Yeah. But, but this guy drew me this picture, excuse me, and it's, it's of a deer being chased by dogs, fawn oh. being chased by dogs, oh. very, yeah. it's, it's an interesting, it's